Hi, Louis. Hello. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Louis, what is permaculture? So for me, permaculture is a way of thinking differently and a way of reframing our patterns so that we can manifest transformation in the world, in our lives, and be who we truly are. Okay. And um, we know it, you publish uh, uh, this book, People and Permaculture. Yes. And uh, what is it about this book? So the reason I wrote People and Permaculture was for two reasons. One, I've seen that the, it's usually things to do with people that get in the way of projects um, forming their visions in the world. Yeah. And it, it's either the relationship between peoples or the group dynamics or even our own personal well-being that affects how effective we are in the world. So when in permaculture, when we have limits, we look to transform them and say, okay, that becomes a need of our design. So what, finding ways to enhance our effectiveness and to relate better to each other um, is, uh, is one of the reasons why I wrote the book. The other reason I wrote the book was that I've um, seen and experienced for myself how transformative permaculture can be in our own lives and the, in the same way that permaculture can make a huge difference on the landscape and transform landscapes into productive, healthy landscapes, regenerative landscapes, we can also use permaculture in our own lives to be healthy, productive, regenerative human beings ready to perform in the world and contribute. Yeah. And uh, of course all this uh, you do through design because I see uh, you develop a new kind of design, which is called yes. the, the design web. The design web, yeah, yes. Can you spend a couple of words on this? Yeah, so the design web um, I, I created as a way of specifically um, looking at what's important in people-based design. So it includes appreciation in there, it includes like, the visioning, um, and the pause as well, how do we relax and reju rejuvenate ourselves as well. So the de also the de design web, the structure of the design web isn't a linear process, it's a non-hierarchical web of connections. So recognizing that our vision is connected with our action plan and our limits leads to functions of the design and that we need to reflect at various points in the process not just okay we've done everything now let's reflect it's like these things and we can start at any point as well it might be that we run into a problem and that leads us to starting a design process it might be that we have just a seed of an idea and we think okay where how can this grow let's take this idea into a, a design process so there's multiple starting points as well for the design web as well as then ways of dancing dancing between the anchor points and connecting them all up into a holistic design okay then i was going around the convergence uh, and i saw a small market uh, and i found also this book uh, this little booklet as well yes. seven ways to think differently yes and uh can you tell why you look this book as well. Yeah, so I started um, writing this book because as you started this interview, I so many often get that question, what is permaculture? And it's like, okay, well, what, what is really permaculture for me? And trying to take a bigger picture of what is permaculture. So not looking at the techniques we might use, but actually what's the bigger vision then? And how does it make a difference in people's lives? And what, what I realised was that it, the permaculture is have a different way of thinking that is different from the mainstream para uh, paradigms that have led to a lot of the destruction and the scarcity and the greed and the, the destroying of ecosystems and the lack of uh, cooperation. And so I was looking at this and thinking, okay, well, the permacultures have a different way of thinking about the world. Let's, let's look at that a bit more carefully and think, what does that actually mean? And so then we have the seven ways to think differently. Okay. Which, um, um, do you want to hear the seven ways? <laughs> so it starts yes. with abundance thinking, it's living in gratitude and balance. 
and then we move to solutions thinking. So with solutions thinking, it's believing, the first step is to just believe that there are solutions. Even to these big global problems, there are solutions out there. We just need to work in that direction. Then we have systems thinking, so sensing the interconnectedness of all life and then how we can actually work with systems and create systems that will serve us and um, help us reach our vision. Then we move into thinking like nature, looking at nature's wisdom and bringing that into our lives. And then we have cooperative thinking, so collaborating with each other. For me, I have thinking for the future, so shifting our time frames and thinking quite expansively, so thinking for the seventh generation ahead. And then after all that thinking, we need to move into action. There's no point just to sit here and think. We also need the, from thinking to action, and that's, uh, so that's the, the seventh way of thinking, is how can we actually manifest um, these changes? Yeah, uh, actuality is uh, a core, uh, you know, say, uh, aspects yes. of permaculture now. I think uh, with all the tools, we got everything now, basically, yes. just what we need is more action more doing, you know. Yes. Then, but we need the thought with the action yeah, course, as well, yes. otherwise we're just yes. being like hamsters on the wheel. Yes. Okay, uh, why for you uh, design uh, is the main subject of permaculture? Because it's, it's about this conscious thought and spending time in that conscious thought process so that our actions are more effective. So we know where and when and how to put our energy, whether that's in our business, our workplace, our relationship, our garden. It's been the thought behind the action that's really important. And to do that so that we're not, I wouldn't say we're not making any mistakes, but that at least we're being conscious. And when we make the mistakes, we can consciously reflect on them so that we don't do the same thing next time. I think, I know you are a permaculture teacher as well. Yes. So for you, who is a permaculture teacher? What skills must they have or characteristics? Um, I think for me, one of the important things when I'm teaching is to have pro good processes that harvest the wisdom of the group. When, um, when I do a course, I don't know all the outcomes that will be present because it really comes from the synergy of everyone in the group. And if we create the right container that allows everyone to contribute, then together we find all solutions to whatever that is. So it's a balance between, yes, it's important that the, the, the teacher knows what they're teaching as well, but that it's also inviting and allowing and encouraging everyone's contribution and then together the most amazing wisdom comes out from that. Thank you, Ruby, to share your work with us. Thank you. Thank you.